I'm going to open the Dunbar Board of Selectmen meeting to order. All three selectmen are present. Bruce Homo, our uh, town administrator, is present. Leo Martell is videotaping for the public. It will be on YouTube and our town website. Linda Nickerson will be doing the uploading. I have some old business here of two sets of meeting minutes from the select board's office. Um, the first one is January 6th. We have a motion for that. Yeah, I'll give you a, a move to approve the January 6th regular meeting minutes as amended. No, he wasn't here. Oh, I'll second your motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any discussion? No, okay. no discussion. So. Okay. okay. Liam, thank you for putting in uh, the warrant articles. We're not in this discussion on the previous meeting, so if you tried to read our meeting minutes, you could not tell what was going on. I was at the meeting, obviously, and I couldn't tell, so I know it. the general public couldn't. So we added the warrants in there, and now it makes it more readable. So thanks for doing that, Liam. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, January 13th minutes. Second. Motion been made. Second. Any discussion? I think the uh, recorder is doing a great job. We should continue using her. Okay. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 We can pass it along. That we are still we do appreciate the work she's doing. Yep. Well, she'll hear it also. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Uh, no, that one he can't sign. He said to oh, that's right, too. You're right. It's the six. This one here, he came back to me. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Okay. I'm going to open it up for public comment now. I'm um, also, thank you. Do you have anything? No. I don't want to put a running for selectmen hat out there. I'm running for selectmen. I uh, uh, want to state your name for the public. Ray Plant. All right, great. Thank you for coming down to watch our meeting. Okay, uh, we're going to do a final review of the um, board review of the proposed budgets for 2022. Okay, what I did for the board tonight, uh, I took the liberty of separating every single budget to make it easy on the larger sheets combined. And then, as a whole... Why don't you show me which one you're looking at, Liz? This one right here. Okay, it's that's got this every one. single budget in there okay, separately. Right. And then you can refer back to the detail of your operating budget, which is the smaller font that's generated out of the program. The one that says expenditures on top? Yeah, with notes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I figured this would be easier, but you're going to want to refer to the back page. But we also and at this some... point, they all match each other. Yeah, I have a summary sheet in there, so okay, I'm going to verify awesome. all that. Okay, so I guess we'll start in the first page. Lynn, do you want to walk us through them, or do you want me to just go through them? It's up to you. I've been extremely busy. I could use a break. <laughs> all right, why don't I walk through them then? And you just give us a heads up if you remember something. Yep, absolutely. The first one is the executive. Um, 2021 budget was 138783. <coughs> Our actual is 137447. And the requested amount is 150870. And if I remember most of that was the 3%. 3% and then um, 52 weeks for the second secretary at four days a week. We had done that part way last year, yep. and uh, it's going extremely well, and he um, is a big help in my office. I don't remember anything we could change on that one to you guys. Yeah, I want to make a change. Okay, go ahead. I, I want to amend this budget so that uh, I'm making a motion to uh, increase the selectmen's yearly salary by $500 over what it's currently paying. I know you get a different amount than we do, okay. but... Increasing them all by five hundred dollars. So it'd be an extra fifteen hundred dollar increase on the line. Correct. Uh, fifteen hundred. That's a motion on the table. Motion's been made. Need a second. Mike. I'll second that. Motion been made and seconded. Discussion. Um, yeah, that? I think we should have a little discussion. Okay. Right? Well, the reason I'm bringing it up, and you know how I feel, we change the compensation 
of elected officials at time of election so that everybody knows if they look into it what what the uh, you know the uh, what they get paid so uh, I figured since I'm not going to benefit because you know how I feel about that too is I wanted to propose to make that change this this election and that way you know at least there's some compensation there because we have hours that we do for the manifest we have hours to do with the separate committee meetings we have special meetings we have our regular meetings that could be an hour or three hours or whatever so uh, it's just I if you break it down it isn't a whole lot of money no no I don't think it is uh, just so the public knows uh, the pay rate for a select is about Two thousand a year. Yeah, twenty-two and twenty-four for the chairman, something like that. So it's uh, it's very minimal. The last um, time, last time was changed. I think it was nineteen about nineteen years ago. <laughs> if you take if you take just these meetings here, it's less than ten bucks an hour. If you take all the selectmen's committees that we have to be <coughs> in as a selectman, um, like I'm a rep on the planning board, and also the town hall restoration, Mike's on the police department as well as the transfer station. Bob's on several other committees that we have in town here on the uh, on the buildings. awareness, the joint loss. Yeah. So I mean, when you add those meetings, I'm I'm down at the town here about three out of five nights during the work week. So it's a full time job. It adds up. <laughs> Simply said. So it's, I think it's that mostly that, it's mostly volunteer. So yeah. it's just a stipend. That is really volunteer. Good. Yeah. Um, and and I do want to say that during all of those periods of time where we've had more meetings during COVID, when we've increased others' pay for COVID, we've never taken that either through those years. So, Okay, so that change has been made. We did vote on it. call the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you, Bob, for bringing that up. First budget here. Um, I'll just read the total off again. 2021 budget was 77,680. She actually spent 74,145. Um, the requested budget is 84,492. Uh, we are having more elections. Um, so elections, meals went up and the elections went up. And uh, just to tell you, on the election line, we had 4520 proposed in 2021 for the budget. She actually had only 1393 because a very small election that, um, and then we have three scheduled for this coming year, so it's at 9783. Her deputy stayed almost even here. It looks like three percent. At three percent, and then she is three percent. So. I can't see anything that we could change on there if we, unless we changed elections, and we can't really do that. And as she's explained in the past, this, she has to budget for, as she has to pay every single person. What, what happens is people do end up volunteering their time, so there is no um, expense there, but she still has to budget what she needs in case she has to pay them out. Yeah, so. Um, I think that uh, I don't think there's anything that you guys see any change you want to make on this one. Are we good? I'm okay. good. Okay. Oh, can I stop right there for a second? Yeah. Last week you asked me to contact the treasurer and the tax collector to yes. get the approximate number of times and the mileage that they have for um, their. Um, yep. Yeah. So the treasurer says she goes to the bank <coughs> at least once a week. Uh, 52 weeks is $542. Tax collector goes um, at least twice a week, and that's at 1,084. And then Linda's um, calculated at when we changed the price to 56 instead of 58. It came to 11, so. so we have a total um, travel allowance of 2813. So if the board is considering that, I can include it in another line. I prefer to have it in a I think it would be prudent to put it in the budget only because while we're doing our due diligence, if we find we've got to pay those three for that, 
uh, we'll at least have the fundings in the line. Right, you're if you choose to, to do that, it would be there, but uh, I don't know when we'll get a determination. But no, and that's why some of them may be fee paid. Right. You know, so. so if we if we put it in there, it'll just come back to the taxpayer anyway. Right. Um, um, as un unspent. Right. I'm, I'm just saying that uh, you know, hopefully we get an answer. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be that quick. Right. Because of the time when we ask the question. And but you're obligated to follow up on. I am. I will. I'll let you know as soon as I know. Okay. And I'll let you know. But uh, you know, if they fall into that category where they can take it, uh, you know, and deduct it from their taxes okay. as a tax credit. Yep. They're better off to go that direction. Okay. So if once we know. At least some money will be there to pay them if it isn't, and if they can, they can use the other method. In a contrary point of view, it's a, it's inherent in the job. There's a salary, it's a posted salary, and those are the duties inherent. If you didn't want to take it, don't run for the position. So I'm being a little contrary in there. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's good. So I think let's add it to the budget, Liam, okay. but no one's going to come back. Can I round it to 3000 I mean, these are estimates. I'd like to just round it to around the That's fine. Estimate. I'm comfortable with that. And then yeah. I also would like to just, I'm going to amend the name under the um, personnel administration. I have a vacation longevity. I can do slash mileage, and I'll add the 3000 in that line. Where are you? Eight, uh, like four pages in. One, two, three, four. Oh, we're not doing it under... No, we wouldn't do it under a department because it's affecting three different positions. Okay. So, so I want to put it under uh, personnel change, the vacation longevity slash mileage, and then add 3,000 in that line. And you still have a final page on. It's about, it's right after... It's about five pages down. You're going to see a legal okay. and then it, yeah. it's personnel administration as the Social Security Medicare. Okay, which one are you renaming? Vacation, longevity, slash mileage. Okay. For the time being until I. But that's, this is the category you want to put it in. Okay, so we're going to add 3,000 of you to that category. Yes. Yeah. And as stated before, that will go into. Uh, It'll go back towards the uh, excess revenues at the end of the year if we don't use that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're making some headway here. Okay, so no changes to elections? Nope. And uh, the next one, we're at the general fund. And uh, this would be the financial? Financial administration. Mm -hmm. It was budgeted 2021 as 118,270. The actual was 103,636, and requested as 122,097. Um, slight increase in uh, computer support. Uh, Three percent for the tax collector, the deputy, and the treasurer, and uh, contractual for the audit services. And there's a couple of thousand in there for other um, co-op advisors um, services. So it's a slight increase. And that 3% in there. Yep. And our computer support services went up. Yep. That's an increase of 3,827. Max, and if you come in less, I mean, you could take 500 or 1,000 off here and there, but it's not going to really amount to anything. No. I, I'm happy with it. Okay, so financial administration, no changes. Um, assessing department. Budgeted for 2021 was 29,904. The actual expenditures were 27,885. And requested was twenty nine nine ninety one. And 
Twenty percent, right? That's correct. And then the computer support, that's the uh, website support, and that's gone up slightly. And that's it. I don't see any changes there that stick out. Glaring is small increase. Okay, legal. Thirty nine six hundred was budgeted twenty twenty one. We spent I'm sorry, thirty nine thousand six hundred. Uh, we spent actually twenty one oh one three and we have thirty nine six hundred budget again this year. That's a request of the board at the previous meeting to keep it flat. Yeah. So I just requested a couple of different lines. We kept that flat. Some departments like zoning had a large legal year last year. Um, we didn't have as much as we expected, so it adjusts up and down to the different departments, but we've chosen to keep it flat for this coming year. You guys see what that's yep. going yep. um, The next one is personnel administration. Um, the budget in 2021 was 336751 They actually spent 339471 and they're asking for 344, 192, and we added 3,000 to that loan. Um, that is a little bit of a change there. Yeah. Um, one of the big items is the retirement. Um, yeah. we, the rates changed this year, whereas last year there were six months under the old rate of like 26 percent, and now it's up to 29 percent for the police department com uh, employer com contribution, and then the employees went up slightly also for a six month period. So last year was a s uh, half, half old rate, half new rate. This year it's 12 months, all new rate. So that's taken care of that. And then those numbers are calculated based on what the departments project for their pay payroll that will affect these um, social security, Medicare, retirement, and unemployment numbers, workers' comp. And insurance went down, just for a note. The insurance in 2021 was 97783 We actually spent 89781 and the requested budget is 8540 so. I believe there was a holiday credit of some sort. Yeah, we did get a lot. We, we did vote on that. Yeah, we moved oh, it. Actually, last year we had a new police officer added for four or five months, and, the, and typically when you have to... Um, they went to stipend, right? No, nope, they have uh, uh, insurance, but they um, opted to go with a single plan and not a family plan. So when you're budgeting, you have to budget for a family, not knowing what the individual is going to bring to the you know the budget. And then what we had was we didn't spend it all, and he applied for a single. Right. Yeah. Okay. I don't see any changes on that one. Planning and zoning. 2021 budget. Is 16391. They actually spent 10179 and their requested budget is 16606, which is virtually flat except for a little bit of a. No. No, I think the no. fees and services went up, and that is Central New Hampshire Regional Planning. That's based on a per capita. The mapping went up 100. Yep. And a slight increase there. Yeah. Just small increases. I don't see anything on that one that we can really adjust. No, that looks, I like it. It went down. Okay, government buildings. Um, that budget was 250 537 We actually spent 198 476 And our new budget is 210 925 We did reduce the building maintenance budget for 200000 to 150 uh, We need to leave some money in there to take care of some issues that we have outstanding. And uh, we're also um, making sure that we have some funds available if there's anything that comes up on the town hall as we do work at it. So does this number work for you? I know I originally lowered it to 100 and it really killed the budget. Right, no, 150 is better. 150 works for the board, okay. Yep. Any other large changes in that you see? Uh, well, we had the admin general government buildings. I probably should change it to mowing, a uh, lawn care. That's where we have the contract now that uh, with the new company, and it covers the school maintenance and the. Um, so that was a ten thousand dollar increase right in that budget. So that uh, that's a, a good size jump right there. Yeah. Was that separated before in other lines too? 
No, yes, always in that line, but the, I don't like the description. Admin, general government was, we've always for the last 14 years had a, a local guy who did it for five grand or just under. Okay. Uh, then we had to go with a, new, uh, a professional company and that's when we uh, signed up for a multi-year um, contract. contract for right. fixed prices and that's where we're at right now. Okay. Just uh, as I recall, the, uh, the, the former gentleman didn't want to do it anymore? That's correct. Okay. Yep. So we were forced into bidding it out. Well, we bid it out to include the town and the school, and right. I don't think that he and there's, wanted to do it. And we've grown a little bit. There's a lot more area in the school area. There's been yeah. mowing behind the church. I, I just want to make sure that as we talk to the public in the, in the public hearing, we can talk about that. Yep. That's a, a pretty good jump right there. Yeah, and you notice there's a $575. Our, the, the lawn needs some real, uh, some TLC, and I thought maybe just a little bit of fertilizer or something. Spread out the budget there for that. Yep. The Garden Club did talk about uh, doing some of that as well. Yeah. Okay, so that's the only thing that we'll no, change. Dave, I'm just worried about, um, you see the, um, look at the gasoline town. Yeah. Gas prices, I don't think are going to come down too soon. And look at, <coughs> look at what we spent in 21. But the thing is, that's a floating spot. Okay. I actually pay the invoices from that line and I collect the money from the budgets of the off the departments. Okay. So that it's a, a pass-through. It's a pass-through maintained. Yeah. It's a pass-through and we do buy it bulk so we do get okay. a little bit of a break. Yeah. Okay. I just again I just want to because someone's gonna look at that in, in the uh, in the meeting. Yeah. We're gonna be able to explain that. That's right, yeah. Okay. Now we're into the uh, cemetery budget. Their budget was fifteen seven hundred. They actually spent fifteen seven hundred. Their new budget's twenty nine three hundred. Um, they reviewed a bunch of their increases earlier on, um, and they do have them highlighted, broken down here under the cemetery improvements. They had materials of six thousand. Marketing and training was five hundred, and headstones twenty five hundred. I know the headstones, we wanted to get those repaired um, for a couple of years now. The cornerstones in the cemetery were 1500 It was 500 The fence repair they took out, they had 1900 and they only have 200 now. The mapping, they had 900 and it's 1500 They're trying to close out their mapping of all the cemeteries. And they need two licenses to operate it. They do. One okay. for the for the uh, the trustees, and then one for uh, internal or public use. Their loam and weed control went up. I know that they want to do an overlay of loam on the East Dunbarton Cemetery because that is pretty much just a moss bed out there. And Hearst House maintenance, they did two thousand on that and I think that they spoke about doing the ramps with that money. Um, Their mowing went up slightly as well. They, they rounded up from the 10000 they spent for all the three of them to 11 6. That's a new bid for them. Yeah. New year bid. You know, uh, can I make a comment? Yep. I don't understand why you have to do marketing on the cemetery. It markets itself. You know, most people that want to be there would come either to the town hall to get information as to what they'd have to do, and they'd be pointed in the right direction. Uh, most other cemeteries don't have marketing. I mean... Is that just training line really like lean and it's labeled that way as marketing, or...? It's marketing and training. It, in the past, we've had it. They used all of our money that we had budgeted for training, and uh, it, because they're so new, there's like four plus two alternates, and they want to extend but is that it training. Computer to training all or state training? It's or? state training. It's, it's state training. Yeah, yeah. And they do have one new member to send there. They have two alternates, and there's always annual training that every one of them goes oh, to. Oh, they are. Yeah. Okay. Is, is, uh, so marketing is not really a part of that. Or it's it is, but it might be a hundred bucks at that. It might be fifty dollars. It's not going to be a lot. It's just okay. getting posters made and 
advertising of you know the cemetery plots available to purchase. So that's one issue. The other one is uh, the Hearst House. Uh, you know, if I, I'm looking at it, and he did a good job figuring out what he needed to do. Yeah. I just he would have applied it over a few years of getting these things done versus, uh, again, <coughs> you're looking at this budget, and I don't know where it's going to go next year. Well, I was appreciative that they took their three Warren articles and knocked out two of them and just came back with one there. Um, well, you know, a, a, a question was asked about the Cremains Garden, which is what I had on my mind. He's got quite a few in the first Cremains Garden. You're going to establish another Cremains Garden, but are you going to need that? or is are things going to change again? You know, we went from full burials to pre, uh, pre, people being cremated. Mm -hmm. And what happens if it changes again? Do, have, do we have to look for... But the one he has in there is it's all funded. To, it's no taxation on the funding on that, right? If I'm remembering right. The one that no, for the, for the other Cremains Garden, he's spending money. Yeah. I'd have to look back at the Warren article now. I thought it was funded out of those different funds you had. Mm -hmm. This one that's on here that we're voting on that's no taxes? Yeah. It comes from three different sources and it's not taxed. I don't think there's any taxation left on this, no one. No. Leo, you had a question? Yeah, well, no, it's a comment here. Okay. The problem I saw was that, okay, what he's saying, not no funds to be raised by taxes, is actually false because he got that money. Uh, from a uh, trust that he found, he said, right? There were $25,000 there. In two years, he spent it all. He's spending it all. And what I had suggested was well, do things in a timely manner because when he's out of office, there's no, none of that money is left. Mm -hmm. It's all gone. So what he's asking for is for us to, f now the town to, to pay for this because he doesn't have any money left. So what you're saying, the $8,000 he took off the off his Warren article, he's taken out of the last of that fund. There's no money left. So I think this like out of control myself. Because yeah, you don't need that, to do all of this. There's only one fund that did that the other fund was the other one. I agree. One but the eight thousand dollars is coming from that last money that he had left. He found last year in two years it's spent. Am I correct? Yeah, that will close yeah. out that. And then that, say, one, right. that one account. Right. So yeah. now you're, what you're talking about is that the baseline for your this budget next year is probably going to be 29.3. That, that that'll is, be your new baseline. Yeah, typically. It, yeah, it exactly. Is, yeah. And it's not, not, it wasn't necessary because everything went full bore fast instead of doing things as, you know, peop, everybody else in town works on, on their budget and they work under their budget. And this committee worked out of their budget and you know yourself you've come, they've come back to you multitude of times for extra money because they overspent mm -hmm. nobody's ever reined them in yeah. and this is what's happening now well, I again. think you've seen we have had several meetings where we do rein them in I mean they're well I've been here you know I come to every meeting and I've yeah. seen where you he came back a second time and got more money after you said it was the last time but he came back anyways and he got it so what I see here is is not con not taking care of the money it's just a want and not a need there are not you know, all these cremain gardens weren't needed because you had one that's not even half full and you're building another one, you know, just because somebody wants to be buried there in a cremains garden, you don't have to build a whole cremains garden. So I just see where it's out of control. But we're looking at this budget now, the cremains garden's on the warrant. Correct. I, I, so I, you don't understand what I'm telling you. I do understand. You're, you're saying he's using that money, he could be using it here. He should have been using, doing things in stages instead of trying to do everything at once and come into the town and asking for all that money all the time because any department could do that. I'd rather give this money to John Wiggins for the fire truck. That's my attitude because that fire truck he told us is going to be between four fifty and six hundred fifty thousand. We're gonna to have to take a bond out for that. I'd rather put it towards that. But that's the smartest money place to put your money. Can I just say that the um trust account that he's withdrawing for the Warren article? made less than $10 in interest last year. 
We're not it's talking not about money. interest, though. What we're talking I about is but the money when is he's out of valuing because we're not using well, it to make. It but my point is, it's not being used properly. Because the next person who's in that position won't have any money to play with. They'll have to come to the town directly, and we'll have to pay all that money out of our taxes. You know, like I had explained to him, what happens if you have broken headstones? He said, we'll just come to the town and ask for money. That's exactly what the answer was. And here we go, we got headstones that are broken. And we're, he's asking the town for the money. We had the money in that, in that fund to pay for that before, but now we need to pay for the nice things that they want in there while we pay for the repairs and everything. So, I mean, you guys are going to do whatever you want to do, but I, I think this is like a, out of control. And as I said, I would much rather John Wiggins get that money for that fire truck rather than putting it there. That's my attitude. As a taxpayer, that's what I believe. Okay, thank you. So, to get, just to get back, is I understand you identified a lot of things that have to be done. And I would have liked to see him apply that over two or three years to do that work rather than doing it all at once. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the only difference. Like, yes, the cemetery needs loom. That might have been one of the things that he might want to address first. Uh, but certainly the Hearst House ramp could come at any time. I think right now with the metal roof that's on there, it's protected. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to take it out of there. They have a window on the front. If you want to observe it, I mean, I don't know if that's ever available for people to see. Dave, that, as far as that, the Hearst House, I had volunteered to build that ramp myself. And I said, give me a couple of years to get collect the stones. I'll build a stone ramp. And I said, it'll never move. It'll be beautiful. Now, why was that meaning when you said that the side should be cobblestone, not just... Not cut stone, not cobblestone. Over. Cut stone. Or cut stone, so yeah. it doesn't spill over. Right. But I never heard you say that you were willing to do it. Yeah, I told him. You did? Oh, yeah, okay. I told him. Donna Duntall talked to him herself about it, because we had discussed <laughs> it. And she, she called him and, and talked to him about it. She, then she asked me, has he called you yet? And I said, no, he hasn't. And so at this point, I'm going to back out of it, because I don't know what the heck's going on there. So that was my if point. You're still at, willing to do it, at one of the, the listen, at one of the meetings, <laughs> he was here and you were here at one of these meetings, and he said the two thousand dollars. I said, Don, you could have had it done for nothing. He said, Well, this is not bad. So, you know, you guys let it go. Well, just to let you know, I have a note when I took notes here that he that was that's a that's a swag. He didn't even know the cost of the of the ramp. He just was guessing. Yeah. I don't know when he put his final in. This doesn't match his original if he did get an estimate on it or not. No, it's the same. It's the same as original. No, I know it's the same. I said, I don't know if, oh, yeah. It, yeah. if he got an estimate since then. So, oh, okay. anyhow, whereas he's not here to discuss doing it over a, a period of time. No, this is our final cut, so it's right. up to our So, board. as far as I'm concerned, I, I don't see an immediate need for a ramp at the Hearst House. I actually don't know how, how often they pull it out or if, if there is a need to They pull don't. Out. They don't. I haven't seen it move for right. quite no, a while. No, they don't. Uh, right now they have wooden ramps that they use if they take it out. Um, it was <laughs> originally what I was when I spoke with the cemetery trustees, they had thoughts of renting it out to people. And I told them you can't do that. It's already been taken care of. Nobody can use it not for funerals or anything. It's there for maybe put it on a flatbed for a parade, put it out for people to look at. It's a, it's a museum piece. We had the same concerns when they were talking about renting out that building. You know, yeah, no, it's a, building. it's a museum piece. So, so the tough. point is that it doesn't come out. And, and he said people should see it. So well, then take it out and put it on the lawn. You know, things like that. But you can't, you can't just take it out. They want to rent it out for $50 or something like that. They knew people who would rent it. I was like, that's not a rental piece. So it doesn't come out often. Okay. So you one, thing, back. one thing I noted, uh, when you came in here, I, big bro letters, I said too many projects going on. He said three cemeteries. Three year plan would be great. In fact, one cemetery every year, and I would almost, I could almost cut it, recommend cutting the increase by, a third, by two thirds. Across well, the board. I don't think we let Bob finish what he was. Well, no, I, I, you know, I, like I said, 
He had laid out what he wanted to do. I thought if you spread it out, you got three cemeteries. And, and again, I thought of the same thing, a three-year plan. Each year he could come and address each cemetery and get it done, get it to where he wants it. I don't think the hearse house thing is a, you know, uh, something that needs to be done right away. Cause, and I can't see the use of the hearse. And if people get to view it, so It'll be one thing, and then somebody has to open that up for them to view, and nobody's ever even unlocked it before and let the rain come in. So, so let me let me do this and see if I'll take a stab at this, and we'll see if the board has consensus on this. On the Hearst House line, or the maintenance line there, he's requesting two thousand. It was originally a hundred. I would like to cut that in half and give him a thousand to fund half of it and make him do it over a couple of year period of time. So, I'm just going to give you my suggestions, then we can talk about them. When you come up to his line above there, I'm going to leave the loom alone for the East Side Cemetery, because that's needed for a long time. I'm going to hop up to the cemetery improvements. Um, they actually spent 3400 That budget was originally 1000 They have 9000 I'm going to drop that by 3000 and leave that line at 6000 So that would take four thousand dollars off his budget. And again, though, I don't see why you would need to spend money this year on the Hearst House. You have the other projects going on, and he could come in a subsequent year. And well, I did it as, as and actually get a number ahead of time from people, rather than again swag. going to a sole source because it would have been the most convenient. So I, mean, I was just trying to give some funding towards a project that over a couple of years you could add that together and do the project. Yeah, but yeah. you have to encumber it in the right before if, the if, end of the year. Yeah. If he doesn't expend the money, if he goes back to the so why even start a project? I said, I'd say do that next year because it's a need, not a want. Yeah, just the opposite. A right. want, not a need. And then it makes it look like because well, they never you want change. Leave, do, you, do you want to leave the top one alone and just scratch that one 100%? I, I, I scratch I, what? I, I took 1000 off the Hearst House and I took 3000 off the $9,000. And I think taking the 3000 off the 9000 isn't a bad idea because, again, you could apply that next year. If you look at the number, you're taking $4,000 off of $29,000. you are at twenty five. The budget hadn't changed for the cemetery in quite a while, right? It's been at about 15 grand for, and for a, a while. Long, long time. So you, you're talking about changing it about 10 grand there, there so. So I mean, I mean uh, that might be, uh, I, for me, it's more palatable because he's laid out what he needs to do. He has an idea of what has to get done, and you're just crossing it off your list. So it sounds way. like you guys are okay with what I propose, but make the hers down to zero on the first house, or leave it at the 100 that it was originally, so they have a line item in there. Yeah, yeah. So erase it and put it at $100. So that will save... Uh, should bring it down to 24.4. Yeah, and, and it's dropping it 4900 and... $4,900, right? And again, we're not saying these can't be done, but it can be done over time. And it doesn't look like the budget's gone from one extreme to the other, where you've almost doubled the budget instead. What's the new total? Twenty-four four. Yeah, I don't. I I, I applaud Don for his uh, enthusiasm for his uh, go out and get it done. But I think it's tough to get it done in all one year when you have a when you. Double, almost doubling the budget. But I will, I will say this. You had a budget and a board before these guys got in here that didn't do anything with the funds. So oh, they absolutely. had the funds that went back to the town. They had the, nothing ever got done. So when you go from a budget there that nobody ever did anything and then you got a new group of people who want to try and take care of this um, area, I mean, they certainly look a lot better since they've been taking care of them. So 
I want to put that out there. Right. Absolutely. I concur with you. Yeah. Just go, you can go by Pages Corner Cemetery. It's such a pleasure to go by it. It looks well maintained. I mean, all of them. I, I remember that one on the east side getting neglected, and now that looks 100% better. So. Yeah. But again, um, it, you know, over a period of time, yep. it looks a little easy, more palatable because you address everything this year. Now you have to wonder what next year is going to bring. Right. Because you're going to look for things that need to get done. Yep, I'm going to agree with you. So let's go ahead. So the consensus is to change it by the total of $4,900 yep. for a new total of $24,400. Correct. Right. Right. I'd like good. to make sure Don, I'd like to have a member of the cemetery committee speak to that during the public hearing. Yeah, all these departments are smart right. budgets. Um, it, well, you guys, on the operating budget, it's really. But you know, the town meeting. The town meeting. If it comes up at the town meeting. I think we. It's we discussed have a by the selectmen. Okay. You've been drawing the, the meeting up for all right. very. I mean, you're going to do that at the public hearing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. more than yeah. Right. yeah, okay. Right. Okay, I'll let that slide. Okay, police departments at 482 289 was a 2021 budget. They actually spent. 484925 and they're requesting 487091. Um, they had the 3% increase for their officers and that was about uh, the only change. He did juggle some numbers from line item to line item to go up and down, but he kept this budget about as flat as you can keep a budget. Yeah, I, so. I don't see a problem. With Lee, I just want to make sure that uh, we, we're not stuck with the liability of uh, paying uh, about $5,000 of uh, vacation time, four weeks? No, that's done. It's already included in there? No, the, it wasn't, it was not included in there. He, it, he took it out. No, it was never calculated, but it was clarified through the contract that this, there was no. Right, but in the original, if the number still from the original budget, I think he planned in his budget. No, 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 he had not budgeted it. And I questioned it, and that's when we uncovered that there was no... Right in our meeting, he clarified that. He okay. Didn't have that included. All right, that's good then. No change, yep. I was concerned that he had undercut his budget, not anticipating what had to be paid out. Right. And then you brought it to my attention through the contract. Okay, good. All right. Okay, moving on to the fire department. They had budgeted in 2021, 119.737. They actually spent 108.938. And their budget is 119.473. They brought it down just slightly, um, but it's pretty much a flat budget, and I couldn't see any changes that we could offer in that. Yeah. I have no problems with that. No, nope, that's good. Okay. Uh, building department. The building department had a budget of, for, uh, your dates are wrong on the top of this sheet, Lane, just to give you a heads up. But your budget for 2021, excuse me, was 81027. Yeah. They actually spent 2021 74656, and their request is at 82558. And that reflects a 3% um, increase. Dave was pointing out that column one and two should be 2021 budgets, not 2021. Looks good. Not too bad. Sometimes. That's true. Okay, highway department. Um, budget for 2021 was 576006. He actually spent 461196. His requested budget for 2022 was six. 01329. Again, that reflects a 3% increase in the payroll, but otherwise kept it just about flat. He's got an increase just for benefit. Uh, the salt price, he's anticipating prices going, changing, going up on that. Winter rolled salt? Yeah. So that's something so we should be aware of as yep. we address the public. They did go up. They did yeah. go up. Yeah. yeah. Not the pavement of salt. The salt. Yeah. Maybe they're going to hit us next year. <laughs> right, yeah. But the salt did go up already. Okay. Um, solid waste is 285011 was the 2021 budget. We actually spent 264514 and the request is for 299024. Um, again, they have the 3% increase in there. Um, 
uh, which there's quite a few part-time employees, so it really affects that line item. All the other line items, I think, were fairly flat that I'm looking at. The only thing I'd like to change is the overtime budget. I, I'm going to 1,500 hours. That's almost a 50% increase in what he had before, rather than using the 4,782 hours. 4,782 is a dollar amount. Well, that's what I mean. Bring the, the, the dollar amount to 1,500. It was a thousand before. Uh, Can I speak on that, Bob? Please? Yeah, go ahead. And the personnel policy states that the employees allowed to accrue up to forty hours of over, the equivalent of overtime to forty hours. So theoretically, that's one week's pay. And I had always recommended to him that he budget at least a minimum of that because if he doesn't get paid directly, which would hit this line, and he has to be paid out at the end of the year because we owe him that, we have to t hit that overtime budget line for at least a minimum of 40 hours. So the 1,030 is pr approximately one week's of overtime if he calculated and banked it for comp time. And then that, if we don't, if he doesn't use it before the end of the year, we have to pay him. So his regular line is for 52. He's entitled to overtime or comp time accrued, which is a week. So we, he would have to do at least one week's worth, which is 1,030, 1,050. So what Bob's doing, he's, by making it 1,500, he's making it almost like a, a week and a half. Whether he takes it as comp time or overtime, it's still right. the same amount of money coming out. Yeah, that's only you know, The only thing is one of them he takes out at the end of the year, so you have a chance to look at his budget and well, see what his money... If, if, I, if I do thirty-seven dollars an hour, which I'm guessing, but it's close because he's in his twenty-four range, that gives him thirteen point five hours for twelve months. That ain't enough. I just don't. Are you going to go over? We've already used, and just these last two weeks, four and a half hours. In today's memo, he's got eight hours there. Um, because he's had snowstorm during the holiday. And what he is doing is banking it, so he will be accumulating his 40 hours of comp time that we will have to pay out. So that will, you know, there'll be budget for that, but... You know you have snowstorms uh, in the winter and you have them during holidays like they just had. Mm -hmm. We can't cut it too short where we're sneaking into the budget. Um, yeah, the problem is in the past, you had someone else that was moving the snow. Since we bought a plow for the truck, that's all changed. Well, they're both, and that's they're both there moving the snow, but... Well, the other person could have run that equipment just as well. I mean, this they did in the past. They didn't uh, accumulate as much overtime when it snowed in the past. This number averages 10 hours, 10.77 hours a month. So I took the total divided by the rate. So it's four hours a week. Which I think... No, it's the, less than four hours a week. If it's 10 hours a month. We have some four and five weeks, so it's two yeah. hours a week. The, the only time, it, in my opinion, the only time he should be doing overtime is when he's there's an illness where he's short staffed and he's got to work extra hours. Because by Thursday, which we know Thursday now, he should he should be cutting his hours Friday. He should be cutting his hours Saturday. He's got an uh, assistant manager. He can go home two hours early on a Saturday and leave the assistant manager closing. He, he's got to learn to manage his time. And I agree with Bob. We can't be excessive. And, this, this is not a critical operation. I mean, we're paying, we're paying extra dollars for an assistant manager. Let's use the assistant manager. Or don't pay him the dollars. Because he can open and close. I mean, he, does he have to be there at, at 8 o'clock? Maybe he can come in at that. If he's two hours overtime, he should be, as a manager, he should be managing his time so he doesn't go over that 40. And the thing is, that's where you, you, we pay an assistant manager to help him out there. I'm going to just say that and I was going to talk about this later, but okay. Lynn and I met with him this week. And, you know, we had an example, and he went through with Lynn and I where they just had to plow during that um, holiday. Mm -hmm. So they were on the holiday. The last two or three weekends on Saturday, they're bombarded from what they're telling me. The workers are telling me that. He's telling us yeah. that. They're bombarded. He's trying to use his vacation time up as much as he can, some Saturdays, some during the week. 
but he finds that even with the four of them down there, they're slim. The stuff is stacking up everywhere. Um, maybe we are going to have to add one more part-timer down there. We talked about it, and we thought we had somebody. It's in his budget. Um, he does have it budgeted. But I do know that Yeah. Um, last year, I know we're, we're basing some of our thought process of last year, which we lost two or three employees, and so there's a lot of turnover, a lot of training, a lot of him filling in for the employees that were lost. So I want to make sure we're basing it off what we have now. And I do know he is trying right now to reduce that overtime as much as he can. You know, you know what? It would be a lot easier if he came before us, as he's supposed to, to request the overtime and explain why he's working the overtime. And we did just have all that discussion. Yeah. So okay. we just did that because you guys yeah. requested us to do it last week. So we and did go down. Another alternative. Yeah. Because I wouldn't be out thinking out of the box here. Uh, Let's create another full-time position. The thing is, instead of paying overtime, pay some regular time to someone and give them some benefits. And that way, we'd have someone with more hours. Yeah, we'd have to pay some benefits and taxes, and the cost may be there, but we'd be creating a position down there where we'd have stability. It'd and be a lot more expensive, I can tell you that one. Yeah, but the thing is, at least we wouldn't be paying overtime, though. I would rather try to add an additional part-timer if we could. Yeah, but we know how the turnover goes with part-timers. As soon as they're offered a good position, uh, the other, we've seen it over, You, we all have seen it here. The thing is, we all encourage it, too. If, if a part-timer get gets a uh, better position, a better paying job with benefits, where do they go? Think of Brad a couple of years ago. Okay, well. Just think um, about that. I will. Well, let's focus okay. on the budget for now, because yeah. that whole discussion is coming up later. Too, okay. Anyway, okay. So. Um, so. so, looking at this budget, it was 285 He's asking for 299 so it's up fifteen thousand. Uh, the three percent is in there. Um, also, the MSW waste is up um, from what he actually expended. It's down from his budget of previous years. So put it this way: I'll support it, but with accountability. Right. In which I think you know, we are we are going that route. You know, I mean, I, I'm not trying to micromanage. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, when you don't know what's going on, you don't know where the hours are being spent to do what. Yep. And uh, we should have, or the <coughs> select board should have an indication as to why the overtime is necessary. Yeah. Here, here's a something for the budget too. Why did his uh, his uniform budget double, double from what he actually spent? He kept it flat, but it doubled from what he spent. Did he not use the uniform last year? He didn't mention that during the budget process that that includes the boots. It's a lot of boots for $4,000. Well, you've got a pretty high turnover in that department, but <laughs> I don't know if it's a... <laughs> I, see, I seem to recall there's a person in this room who wanted to work there for the boots. Yeah, I told him I'd work for no okay. weekends. No, no, no. <laughs> for a couple of days no. and get the boots. I, I point that out, Dave, only because you get... We have some great citizens in town who, who micromanage this budget, and they're going to ask us those questions. If you really wanted to look at it in the detail of the report from your in your packet on page eight, it does give his part-time solid waste um, budget approval. You can see that there's another. Ten, we don't, he spent seventy-three. Granted, he was short-handed, um, and he's asking for a hundred thousand seven fifty. That's on page eight, and that's the proposal for um, four part-time positions in that yeah. department. You said it was page eight. Page eight on this. I need to go one. Yeah, I took that one. Yeah, page eight. Mine must be. It's at the bottom. A oh, bit. I'm sorry. You see it? Okay, I do now. Yeah. Yeah, so there's quite a bit of change right there. That's where most of the majority of the expense went to that part-time employee that we're going to have, right? Okay. Um, the board has said, uh, let's leave that section alone with some overview throughout the year. So let's give it a try. and um, Oversight. Yeah, oversight and see how it goes. Okay, uh, welfare. 2021 budget was 15143 
She actually spent ten thousand one nine three. Her requested amount was fifteen two six seven, which is uh, it's like a small three percent. Three percent on that. So no problem with that one. Okay. Um, the last one, well not the last one, but the last few insurances. Uh, 2021 budget was 32379 actually spent 31379 budgeting 35203 uh, for the increases that we see coming forth. Parks and Rec, total was 6401 they spent 4590 uh, keeping it flat at 6401 Library budget was 109318 The actual was 109309 and they requested 108132. Uh, they kept that real low. Uh, we told them there's a possibility of an addition on that building. We asked them to keep that flat. Okay. That's the review of the budget. Um, do we have any other comments on that budget from the select them? I'd like to thank Lean for putting sort of work into the thank you, Lean. Yeah, thank you. Do you want to? Of the um, BMSI. Report. I was gonna. I was gonna hold on. I, I can give you a. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, anybody from the public have any comments on that budget? Just one general question. Yeah. Uh, the three percent increase we're accounting for. What is that coming off actual expenditure or the budgeted from twenty one? Uh, that should come off the actual for the t the the year has different amount of weeks in it, so they're calculating off the weeks in this coming year. Got it. Thank you. If that clarifies it enough for you. Okay, thanks for that question. I'm going to put this here. Uh, Lee, what sheet were you going through? Next? Okay, the uh, worksheet from BMSI, the last page, gives you the total requested budget. Let me see which one you looked at. BMSI, the very last page. So I'm, I'm adjusting those numbers you just made, those changes you just made. Oh, okay. Okay, go ahead. Fifteen hundred dollars, three thousand dollars, and and reduced it uh, four thousand nine hundred dollars. So, so add fifteen hundred. Yeah. What else? Three thousand. We increased for mat mileage. Oh yes. Okay. And then we, d we decreased cemetery budget from forty nine hundred. So Wait, the, the new. We could have been any closer if we do it to forty five. <laughs> Lane, we can leave your budget alone. <laughs> uh, two seven eight. One five one, so that brings it back to two million seven eighty three one fifty one. That's pretty close. One fifty one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It's almost right back. <laughs> so the amount that Lean is giving us is the actual twenty twenty two requested budget of two million seven hundred eighty three thousand. Okay. You know, you were asked for your first aid kit, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I mean, you've given us a breakdown and you've tried to do it in a straight line, I don't might see. Um, we went over revenues, excess revenues the week before. There's a slight decrease in the surplus of the budget. It came down just about $1,000 from last, last week when we talked about it. And I did do a summary of, um, I don't know if you want to go over the award articles first, or you, if you want to take a look at the estimated tax rate impact based on what is there. Um, did you do the award articles separate for us again? No, I, I went over them. I've seen them right here. Yeah. Why don't we just take a quick walk through them? It won't take us long. No. Okay, award articles. Uh, number one, the first warrant article is just for town official elections and hog raids. Yep. That's a standard one. Uh, warrant article number two, because you have to have it first, is our bond for $1,300,000, and that is for road paving to be used over the 2022 and 2023 fiscal years. You're using the hundred thousand to fund it. Correct. So I just 
just made a note on the summary sheet that I have of the estimated potential revenue that we have to subtract 100000 because we're using it towards a warrant. So just for the general public, we generally um, have a warrant article to give the road agent $100,000 for additional paving. We're going to use that to make the bond payment instead over the next 10 years. Two years. The first initial payment, basically. 22-23. Yeah, I guess... We're going to use that funding from every year, typically. Going forward, yeah. Yeah, going forward is what I... Instead of giving it to them a uh, $100 a year, or 100000 a year. Okay. Um, article number three is our general budget we just spoke about um, to raise and appropriate $2,783,551, which just got adjusted slightly. Yeah. So what I did, I did not fill in the itemized lines, which I will work on, but I used that bottom line number of the number we were working with, 2,073,551, mm -hmm. and then uh, based on the revenues that we had projected, those were up slightly. Um, those are uh, less the estimated revenue of 1,118,559, and then without using any surplus, that leaves a net to be raised from taxes of 1664992 And then the impact for that number, based on the assessment that we used at the tax rate setting last year, is $4.17 for just the operating budget. And last year's, uh, with the uh, Warren articles, was 405 So just with the com combined versus just the operating, the 12 cent increase. Okay. So if we wanted to make it flat and have the same increase as we did a previous year, we could offset that twelve cents with our surplus surplus revenues. Correct. Um, which is what we're going to decipher on our meeting on the third. Or you want to try and work on that tonight? And the only th I think you really need to take a look at your total because I need a, a more solid number before, okay. and because I have a lot of paperwork to get. All right. That. that represents a 2.9 increase in the budget. So it's round up three. It's a, uh, essentially a three percent increase. On the operating budget. Yes. I think that's going to be 1.78 or 1.88. Uh, it's it's 8.9. All right. I'll take a look at that again. I do have to look at last year's operating budget versus this. Oh, year. I, I took 405 and, and 12 cents divided by 405. Oh, oh, oh no. Okay. I guess this, if that's not quite accurate. That's including the Warren articles. That From last year, yes, yeah. yes. But if you're looking at strictly the budget versus yeah. this year's budget right. proposal, versus is a 1.88 increase, percent increase. That's a 2%. That's, well, that, that, that's, that's a reasonable yeah. amount. That's, not, that's very small. Yeah. I can live with that. Okay. Divided by. Okay. Yeah, 1.88. So 1. Okay. I mean, that's so small that uh, we'll even just the three percent raises, which the town we only did a one percent raise last year, and they went and that upped it to three percent at the town meeting. So yeah, yeah. No, we did two percent last. Two percent. We did one, and they one. added two more. Correct. Correct. So for a total three. of three. Mm -hmm. Is that what it was? Yeah. I thought it was two percent. Mm -hmm. I thought it was two no. when we did the three. It was two percent. They added one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One of the two. Yeah. It was three percent in the day. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I think we did do two. Because mm -hmm. I know we always talked about the previous board yeah, yeah. point seven seven. Because it was slightly over two percent. Yeah, you just right. dropped it down to two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, back to the Warren article. We just discussed the operating budget slightly. Let's yeah. Show a little bit. So we'll move on from that one for right now, Lee, and go to um, article number four. Yep. Um, to raise and appropriate the sum of $100,000 for additional paving. This sum to come from unassigned tax balance of 2022. No amount to come from taxation in 2022. This warrant will be null and void if article number two passes. So if the road bond passes, we're going to um, X this one right off the right. sheet. Right. And, uh, if it doesn't pass, he'll have the 100000 he normally gets, and he'll speak to that at the meeting. Article number five, 
to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate the sum of X amount of dollars for the purpose of constructing an addition and renovations of Dunbarton Town Library to allow for second floor community use in compliance with ADA and code compliant access to the second floor. The addition provides compliance stair and elevator ADA toilet rooms and other related owner's expenses and contingencies. And furthermore, to authorize the withdrawal of X amount of dollars from the town of Dunbar unassigned fund balance as of December 31st, 2021, to authorize the acceptance of a contribution of not less than X amount of dollars from the Dunbar Town Hall Restoration Committee with the balance of Oh, you didn't put it in there, Lane. Which, what was I? I you were supposed to add one um, for the ARPA? ARPA grant. Well, isn't that, is, oh, okay, so you want it worded in there. I do, only because that's a separate grant and not all of it's in our revenues yet. And so I don't want to just call it unassigned revenues. Okay. Because it would actually have to lapse one more year before we call it unassigned revenues, so. So add ARPA. And that's going to be 301401. 301 minus 7,000. Yeah. So it's about 294,401 from the ARPA grant. Yeah, that sounds right. Say that again, number, please. $294,401. Thank you. And I did confirm 301401 is what we received. Okay, I did see that. And then uh, we spent seven of it already. Everybody understand those warrant articles so far? Right. Okay, um, warrant article number six to see if the town will vote to raise the appropriate for some $14,000 to be added to the capital, to the reevaluation capital reserve fund. That's the reevaluation for the town that has to be done, so we've left that alone. Article number seven, or warrant number seven, to see if the town will vote raise appropriate the sum of ten thousand dollars to be added to the transfer station vehicle equipment capital reserve fund okay uh, we want to keep that as kind of a placeholder we reduce that down to ten thousand um, dollars article number eight to see if the town will vote to raise appropriate the sum of eighteen thousand one hundred dollars for the purpose of purchase and installation of a can crusher um, this, would be this fund would come from surplus fund balance. Should that be purchasing? Anything? Or um, it doesn't purchasing. sound right. For the purpose of purchasing and installation, yes. No, pur purchase, it's a noun. It's a noun. That's correct? It's a noun mm -hmm. part. Okay. Yeah, purchasing and installation. Purchasing and yep. Maybe it's the word of that's not fitting right with me, but. Of purchase and. Okay. Um. This is coming from his surplus. Mm -hmm. It's encumbered. Mm -hmm. That's the operating budget that he has proposed to you guys, what is remaining in his budget. So the um, revenues total that I gave him for surplus, you would be subtracting 100000 And then you would also be subtracting 18900 because he's requested the board to do that. And the board can change it and say from taxes or from... I, um, or, but that's what he had intended when he presented the one article. The only problem I had is when he presented that to us, I didn't think it through enough. I know that he wants a can crusher to crush the steel cans. I know that it will increase the tonnage that we ship, so we'll be shipping less times. Um, I'm just not sure the 18000 pays it off because... Be now we're separating cans out there with some additional labor, and I have not had time to think that warrant article through. Yeah, so he was basing his having money, and if you look at the actual, these numbers were updated today. He had last year 285011 for budget. He spent 264514 as of today. So that's what he was anticipating, asking the board to use his surplus for his upgrade. Which technically is your total lot. Total Which is in our surplus already. Correct. I just, uh, I have no problem with it if it's financially paying for itself. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with adding something else. Uh, we already have those other machines breaking down all the time. Our, the ones that we um, band up the yeah. 
the cardboard with and the other ones, those machines are constantly, in fact, I wanted to lower down this $10,000 um, on the capital reserve equipment fund for them and he said, I want to be careful not to do that in case we need to upgrade one of those other machines. So we're leaving $10,000 in there when he doesn't need a vehicle or anything else because we're updated down there. So we have the new backhoe loader. But now I'm just not sure that this is the right step to go for the town. I wish I had more time. I'm leaving on vacation. If either of the other two select board members could ask some questions about that. What I'd like to know is, you know, are we separating cans now from steel to aluminum? If we are, we're already doing that function. Yeah, we are. We are. And yeah. so if we're doing that already, then we're going to just crush steel cans with this. And from what I can understand, the only benefit to us doing that is it will pack the cans so we're going to bring more tonnage on our truck when we're going there. So it should equate to less trips. How many years is it going to take to offset the $18,000 with the less trips, I guess, is what I'd kind of like to know. Less right. labor to run no, the I was going to say, what's the additional labor cost, too? You've got to put both numbers in there. Does it make it productive? I just want to, I want to do a little weight on that. You know? Um, I won't be here, Bob, but if you could run some numbers maybe on that and get some. I know, what the labor cost. Is the labor labor joint. Yeah, if you guys could work on that. Where would we find that information? Which Woody has it. Uh -huh. Labor? Okay, so we Woody can it? calculate the labor. They've got all those other machines they use similarly. Correct, but what I think I'm, at, I'm hearing or trying to understand is how many loads do we do now currently with yeah. the material mm -hmm. that we... Yeah, and Woody, and Woody will tell you well, we're going to save three loads a year or eight loads a year because what it is is the truck's going to be hauling more weight instead of cans that aren't crushed, right. you have a lot of volume there with no weight. And he's trying to do this. I know that he's got his weights up on everything he's sending out as well. So he's using the back hole for that and that's helping a lot. I mean if it makes oh, good that's right. if it, if you guys determine it makes good common sense then let's go ahead and do it. But I wish I had asked more questions. Yeah, but the only thing I could see and that's what I asked when he was here is, you know, how much time is it going to take? <laughs> because somebody's got to crush the cans. Maybe so they're have tied up. We, you're not here, but can we ask them to be prepared and come in and talk to the board next Thursday? We have time. Yeah, yeah. And then if yeah, he doesn't have idea. the information, now, that means we're not running around trying to find out and understand what he I, is I, trying to do. I mean, it. it's nice to send out a heavy load. Yeah. Uh, more cans in one load. Yeah. But if it costs you more in labor than it is to send out a couple more loads, it doesn't make sense. Right. So, uh, so just so I understand his whole process, he uses these compactors in within the building. One's for mixed paper, one's for cardboard, and the other <coughs> one is miscellaneous. Aluminum, um, tin, and plastic, all three in the same bin. So is that what he's trying to do, is buy a separate bin so that it never gets I, commingled? I, I, I would let him come in and talk to him. I think that I would be the best, best way to, do, to yeah. understand is get him to come in here. And I think it's one that will crush it down more, the steel. And that would uh, we just, or just, free up the other. You know, the questions we have, we want to know what, how big it's going to be, where you're going to put it, make okay. it, uh, right, what so is it, use electricity, the gasoline, or whatever. I'll ask them to come in next week. Right, and be prepared to talk at length about that. I should have asked more uh, more questions. Oh, we all should have, yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, that's a good question Mike brought up. Is that run on electricity? Yes. Oh, yes. So you're gonna have an electrician go in there and hook that up. Yep. That's the part That's of the budget. Grand. Oh, it's in there. Yep. Okay. That's five grand. Five grand for. I for think that's what he said. Five thousand for installation. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Oh. You're just setting up a can crusher there. It's gonna take additional labor to crush it, so that they can get a heavier load out. And I, I just, I don't, I don't think it makes sense. But maybe you can explain it so that yeah, you so understand it. If it doesn't make financial sense, I'd say we exit off there, and if it does, then we'll leave it. You guys will determine that while I'm gone. Yeah. Mike, do you I'll go with whatever. No, I, I think um, well, Bob and I and you, can we all meet with them? Well, you don't have to be there. I just, Bob and I can meet with them next week sometime. Bob, you come Well, and actually, you, know, you can't, probably won't be able to make the meeting, right? Next week? Yeah. Why wouldn't he? Because if you can make the meeting, and you can talk easy. about it beforehand. Yeah. yeah, the floor plan and what it's going to actually do. And, yeah. Um, yeah, save on time. You know, 
Any other questions on that? Or? No. Okay. All right, going on to the next one. Uh, article number nine, see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $60,000 to be added to the fire department emergency vehicle capital. Um, we're trying to leave that at the 60000 We know we have a fire truck coming up, but as Leo was said earlier, between four hundred and six hundred and fifty. Thousand dollars, and we decided not to lower that one down because it was originally 120, I think, many many years back, and it's already been reduced several times. So yeah, last few years it was dropped down to 40. Yeah, it was dropped down to 40 to help other departments. So I think 60 is a prudent way to go, and next year we may even go higher. We actually took money out of it to for the tanker. Yep. Yeah. To working on so. Yep. You know, when you talk about four hundred thousand dollars for a new tractor, yeah. it's not exactly cheap. Yeah. Okay. Article number ten to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of fifty-six thousand dollars to purchase a new police cruiser. Um, we did ask uh, for a couple questions to be answered on that. I know that the chief was out and did respond back and said, as soon as he's back, he will answer those questions for us. So. He is yeah. working on that. Yeah, you I, guys I, I talked that. to him about that too. I said, you you got to sell this because, uh, uh, to, what, another police vehicle? Well, I think, um, I think I over the last year, people have driven by and seen a couple cars there. Whether it's during the day or night, we yeah. just want to know the balance of if they need to be there, if they're using them, right. if they're there for on call. Um, yeah. You know, the thing is, uh, I, I, I told him to start off with the little story of what happened when the police, when the officer got in the car and tried to turn it over and he couldn't get to a call. Right. That's a st start off with that story. Right. Okay, article number 11 to see the town of Walter raise appropriate the sum of $10,000 to be added to the police vehicle equipment. Um, again, we just took 10000 out of this fund. It takes, if we do a police vehicle every two years, with their special duty fund and 20000 out of this account, we typically can pay for a new vehicle every two years. We haven't been able to go two years because the cars have been beat up. breaking down and getting beat up, but we're going to get to that point. So we decided it's appropriate to put 10000 back in there to keep it level. Okay, article number 12 to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate the sum of $15,000 to be added to the highway. Capital Reserve Fund established in 2012 for this purpose. <coughs> um, that's the highway department. Again, that's a slow buildup of a fund that will eventually pay in the next 10 to 15 years for another highway vehicle, which seems to be about what they last with the salt. Um, item number 13 to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $10,575. For the purpose of improving the Crane's Corner, Cremains and Pages Corner Cemetery, and to authorize the withdrawal of eight thousand eight hundred eighty-four <coughs> from the Cemetery Trust Fund Maintenance Care, established in nineteen eighty-eight, and furthermore withdraw to withdraw one thousand seven hundred and thirty-two dollars from the Cemetery Expendable Trust Fund, established in twenty sixteen. No amount to come from taxation. <coughs> Don originally had three warrant articles on there, brought it all down to one, used all of the funds on this one with no money coming from taxation. Um, when he was in here, we praised him for at least getting rid of them other two. So but I think we should leave this one as is. Don, uh, Dave? Yeah. So this is where I was getting at earlier. So this 8800 Forty-three dollars will drain that fund, mm -hmm. and now every time you need something, you got to go to the taxpayers. When if you do things in increments, as we were saying earlier, you can get some things done. You don't have to do everything all at once because they are just wants, not needs. So you know what I'm saying. So the next people who are on this committee won't have any money to play with. They'll have to come to the town every single time. Yeah, except for he will have the cemetery expendable trust fund. Well, <laughs> what he's going to have is a minor fund. That minor fund. Yeah. The other one, the twenty-five thousand dollars is a, is going to be gone in two years. That's you know, and, and again, I, okay, it looks nice and everything. I'm not saying it doesn't. My point is, that leaves nothing for anyone else. Plus, this could be done in stages. In 
not try to do everything at once so that way you can beautify it while you're in office. So that was my point, just to yeah. show off that that funding will be closed out after. Yeah. We'll get some news of where it's finished. <laughs> hey, Leo, um, I do want to just say that this is just a portion of it. He isn't doing the whole thing. This is just a portion of that Cremains Garden. So I, I understand okay. that. But I'm he's got one here already that's not even full yet, and he wants to build another one. And my point was, you know, you're selling Cremains uh, lots, and you take that money, you put it aside for the next project, you know, the next Green Mains Garden, instead of spending everything as you get it, you know what I'm saying? Because nobody runs a house that way. Well, my thought is, you know, he's reduced it down to this one Warren article. Yeah, he had three on there originally, which I knew we were going right. to work uh, on. All I'm saying is pointing yeah. out the fact that now yep. that fund will be drained in, like I said, two years. So next year when he wants money for his projects, yeah. it comes right out of the taxes, see? I appreciate you take steps. You take steps instead of doing it all at once. You know. Right. Okay. Um, article number fourteen. See if the town will vote to raise an appropriate the sum of two thousand twenty dollars for the milfoil controller core pond to authorize the withdrawal of one thousand ten from the invasive plant species capital reserve fund established in twenty eighteen, and to authorize the selectmen to accept a grant from the state of New Hampshire. DS in the amount of $1,010, known as the Variable Milfoil Control Grant. No amount to come from taxation. Okay. Um, article number 15 is for all other items that are not on the warrant. And have we heard any more as far as the signatures on the petition for the public? I month? believe she's moving forward with that. But would they have until February 2nd, 4 o'clock? Do you see the information about electronic signatures? Are these going to be hand signatures? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I think Linda's, I'm going to let Linda decide okay. what's authorized because I know that it's been... It said that uh, if you guys read that, yeah, sorry, yeah, uh, we don't have to authorize electronic <coughs> signatures within our time unless we have an ordinance. So I'd like not to accept them if we can avoid that. Uh, I'll let Linda know then. If they come hand handwritten signatures, I'm good with it. Glad you both can verify the voters. Yes. Make sure they're within our town. So those are the warrants. Um, so it looks like we have a couple of them that will uh, need some discussion on Lean before you can finish up your your budget. Yeah. 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 Do you say you want to have for one forty? You want to have them come to the meeting next week? Next Thursday. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. If we're going to meet, yeah. Bob and I were going to meet with them, we'd have to announce the meeting. Well, I think Dave's already said that if we, between the two of you, if you feel it doesn't warrant Yeah, I, I think we can make it a, we can make that assertion. Okay. I'm good with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, that way Lane can start on our numbers. Yep. So now, Lane, let's go to your overall page and go down through it. The summary for the warrants? Yeah. Okay, so the top section, Warrant Article 3, the operating budget, that is the um, 2,781,553, le less the anticipated revenue of 1,018,559, so the net to raise in taxes is 1,664,992. We always use the prior year's assessment to calculate the estimated tax uh, rate. And that's uh, 399,463,829 is our current assessment, property assessment. And that calculates to $4.17. Uh, $4 per 1,000? Per 1,000. Uh, no. Um, for that entire budget. Yes, it would be. I'm uh, sorry. Yes. Yes, it is. So 416 per 1,000, so an average $300,000 house would go up. No, that's replaced. That's existing. Comparing it to this one, right. this year's, if it's already earmarked in the uh, the tax rate, there's only an, a what's the increase? I it here. Twelve cents, I think you said, yeah. right? Yeah, I think I said that. I'm just getting a little tired here. You see, thirteen. Four seventeen. Four sixteen. Yeah. It was thirteen cent increase, I think, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, around the one sheet. I saw twelve. Yeah, okay. I'll go with that. And then the next section of the warrant articles you just read through 
The ones on the left are all from taxes, which adds up to 155000 And based on that amount, that is a $0.39 cent increase. Okay, so looking at the 155 See how nice this is when you do them columnized like this? Yeah, thank you, David. It's so nice to be able to see the 140 separated from the 155. Yeah. See how clean that looks, yeah. guys? Yeah. And then one thing that always kind of skewed the projected tax rate, because that was always something I like to try to predict, is you have to keep in mind overlay, and then you mm -hmm. also have to keep in mind the uh, credit, uh, veterans credit return tax credit. And those are things that impact our taxes. So if you don't think about those as a little behind the scenes uh, cost, then you, you can never get that true number of what the tax rate could possibly go up. I put an overlay amount of $50,000. I just recently, um, two days ago, received a, an email from George Sansusi, which I shared with the, both the Board of Assessors and the selectmen that they're going to be trying to settle this next Friday. So I'll be participating in a Zoom meeting with um, Eversource, uh, our attorneys. And Again, if one of you selectmen want to go to that meeting with Lean or be here, you can. It's Zoom, yeah. Um, it's actually a board of assessors function, um, but um, they basically if it's Yeah, I've seen your invite on the, yeah. on the letter you sent. So I think that the 50000 where we got caught behind the all having to pay out almost $100,000 for um, appeals 2014, 15, and 16. This is trying to um, close out all the outstanding years. And then they're also looking to pass a, a house bill, I think it is, to um, that everyone would come to an agreement on for uh, calculating the values on these utilities, which is critical to a lot of our tax revenues. Yeah, you know, I, I was I heard, I read that, and I think I was wondering whether we should uh, make a letter to all our state representatives from our point of view. We've done it before. Dave, would you be willing to sign a letter for that? In fact, what, that won't come He's up for leaving. a vote for a while. He's leaving tomorrow. No, but when when's when's the vote on that? Next Friday. Oh no, the, the House bill. I have to look at the dates. So right. But Dave, would you be willing to have a letter saying how we're we're in support of this? Yeah. In other words, I want to make sure our state representatives don't get bought off by uh, the electricity utilities. Right. Yeah. And we've done it before in the past, and I think it's important to speak up. Because if you don't... I'd like to speak up against the PUC and everything they do to huh. negotiate our rates up. I just saw mine today. That money we just saved, they saved eight cents. <laughs> yeah. I looked at it. Eight cents I saved. Big money. So draft up a letter? Yeah, if you okay. would. Yeah, and that we're, we, I say that we uh, fr uh, firmly uh, stand behind uh, the right, the right establishment. I can get the board of assessors to do the same. Okay. Okay. Getting back to our um, budget, we've got one hundred and fifty-five thousand that are going to be um, raising the tax rate up by thirty-nine cents. Yep. One hundred and forty of it is coming from other funding. So. You get a total here of a million eight one nine. Includes all the extras with the warrants. Yep. That has to come from taxation. So the projected tax rate includes uh, new property values and all warrants is four five six. We got three dollars and eighty cents. Yeah. I believe the board says four oh five, which is down below. And that would include the operating budget and the warrants for the municipal side. So we might do update that cost. So there really isn't a, a 76 increase. 4.56 and it's 4.05. With the warrants, it's a 51 cent increase. If we don't use any surplus. So with the warrant, you get a 76 cent? Yeah. And then. And how did you get down to 63 lower? It's adding the overlay and the uh, veterans credit. Overlay is a. So the overlay should be in parentheses at a negative number, Lee? 
Well, we're actually increasing the operating budget total. So right down to the eight one million eight nineteen nine ninety two, you'd add fifty thousand dollars as a placeholder for the overlay because then we have to increase the total budget. So that adds thirteen more cents. Correct. Which is down below to four seventeen originally. Thirty nine cents for the warrant, thirteen cents for the overlay. And let me see. Okay, so four seventeen. Is the operating thirty nine for the warrant. I see that. Thirteen cents for the overlay. Why is fifty thousand dollars coming up to the thirteen cents? Yeah. Because if you take the it, it basically run it like a, a warrant, take the, the warrant amount yeah, and divide it by like the three ninety nine. Four six three eight two nine, and it comes up, and that's point zero zero one two five times a thousand, and that comes up to one point one two five, which is rounded thirteen cents. So the fifty thousand overlay would be an impact of thirteen cents. The war credits, which is runs at approximately sixty eight thousand dollars, that they give five hundred dollar credits to. That gets that added back into tax rate. Why is the overlay not in our budget? Because it's not. It's set at tax rate. It is. Setting. It's not part of the operating budget. But I just want to outline that when we go to set our tax rate and it's higher than we... In October. In October. It's because we set an overlay amount. It, that may change. That's what I was... If, I'm if, not sure if you remember. That's what I was asking about this year. Because we had a 19 cent impact last year. Yeah. We level funded it with excess revenues, put two ninety four towards it, yeah. and then come to do our taxes in October. We still had a nineteen cent increase. I said, how can we have an increase when we put two hundred ninety four thousand dollars towards it? That overlay is your answer. But the oh no 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 the I think you're talking about the overall total that tax rate. Yeah, that's the county, the state, and the school. Are we're in taxes on that? So the 19 cents we, was from the school then? That's what I thought. It's a combination of those breakdowns. I thought we still had 19 cents on our side. That's what I didn't understand, because we applied 294,000 of mm -hmm. excess revenues last year mm -hmm. to keep our budget completely flat. Mm -hmm. And I believe the town side still went up 19 cents, and I couldn't figure out how that happened. It's a floating number, really. It's a well, it best be guess. Floating. It's a best guess because we have all our numbers in. It's the yeah. end of the year. We set our budget. Mm -hmm. You tell us our tax rate is going to be up 19 cents, is what you had last year. Mm -hmm. We applied $294,000 to that budget to keep it completely flat. Mm -hmm. We went to the voters with that. Come to our tax rate setting in October. We still had a 19 cent increase or 17 or 18 cents, and I did not during know the how. During the course of the year, there's always abatements that are processed. Adjusted. And the abatements will reduce the assessments and um, refund taxpayer dollars. And that's what's reserved with part of the overlay. Well, but I know I we don't have time during our budget process now. Yeah. But as soon as this is over, I want to sit down and go through that with you. Mm -hmm. I, I, think I, want we know, need to I want to know how we can level fund something at our budget process, which we're doing now, <coughs> so we know our budget, and then you get in October the tax rate setting. Mm -hmm. and. All of the 294000 we had put towards it. Yeah, but you're, still there. you're losing some to the vets. Huh? You're losing some for the vets, as she said. The vets you do not know what that number is till um, after. We get our new values, the 390, uh, we get our new values as of April 1st, and then the utility values, which were reduced by 3 or $4 million, get set just before the tax rate. So you're seeing numbers go up, and then you're seeing numbers come down. So it's over four hundred thousand. Well, I just I want to review those numbers for you because I have to follow those from year to year to tell yeah. the taxpayers yeah. what's going on with their money. And when we sit there and go to the meeting and we say we have a level budget, we applied two hundred ninety-four thousand of excess revenues, keep this budget the same as last year. We go to tax rate setting, they get an increase. It's easy to say it's all just the school, but really we had nineteen cents of it. Correct. And but I want to be able to speak proper at the meeting. That's the enough. whole purpose of you referencing it's an estimated tax rate increase. Mm -hmm. You're working with a projection that you think and basing it on last year's numbers. Well, I want to learn how I can project it so it's ac accurate. Dave, Dave, the Dave DRA knock it down by 50 numbers. cents and then when they bring it up to 30, you were ahead. I know, that's what I'm going to have to do. <laughs> yeah. I want to know how I need to guess it better because 
It's so deceiving when you go to a public meeting and you keep things flat and you get to October. It's not. But you, you probably should talk to the Department of Revenue because that's why they... I'm going to talk to our auditor. That too. You can do that. I, I want to know, that's, is there something we're doing wrong? Is every town no, going to no, that's, the, that's the reason why on the warrant it says this is the estimated tax rate impact, because it will change. Right. You know? I, but, but I just like the process to be clean. I like to be able to follow numbers, and when you can't follow them, it makes it so hard to go through the year when they're always changing, just like you said. We've already changed five yeah. times in our budget yeah. here. But. Well, for example, let's say... I'm, I'm anticipating $1.1 million for revenue. If our revenue is coming under by $200,000, that's going to impact the tax rate. It is, but they've never done come in under since I've been here. No, so. but that's because we, we, we budget conservatively. Right. Very conservatively, yeah. But the thing is, abatements, abatements would be one thing. We don't, we, 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 we can't predict who's going to abate. Like right now, I can look at these revenues and I can see where they go down when you spend money on the bills from the other departments. I can understand that. Mm -hmm. But from this point on, we set this budget rate from now to October. I want to know where those changes are, line item by line item, so I can follow it, so I can explain it to the voters if I'm asked. In October, when they get the tax bill. Yeah, and well, I want to know what happened last year. Yeah. So I'll work on that later after our budget. Just so I can follow it. Okay, I lost 13 cents here, we lost 12 here, 5 cents here, and that's how we ended up with that. Just so I can follow it from year to year. There's a, there's so many different moving parts in it, Dave. There can't I'm be working, that many. I'm working with the assessors in adjusting values if someone files an abatement. Um, it may be no abatement money returned, but their uh, property value, which is $500,000, drops down to $50,000, and then we may issue 23 new house building permits, yeah, but, you can look but and after, see. as of April 1st, those we can't pick those up until the following calendar year. So there's a lot of moving parts of how the, the tax rate is set yeah. and where we get all those final numbers. No, I think what Dave's asking is like, from a historical point of view, yeah. just where did that 19 cents, where, where can we attribute it to? Maybe the five biggest categories so we yeah. can talk to it. Yeah. I'm um, not talking about the one cent ones, but there's large ones there that we ought to be able to look at and identify yeah. and see. Because as a board, we may want to do something different from year to year. Well, the, the thing business. is, one thing, one thing I think the biggest threat we've had in the past is the public utilities. Yeah. And, and the thing is, they're, they're, if they get granted any relief, it comes directly out of our budget. It right? does, yeah. Yeah, we're giving them money back under that overlay, and right. we're losing assessment. Right. It's, right. The, it's the two, a double edged sword. We're reducing the property it, assessment. It goes back to what I said. We've got to have a fair and equitable system of government right. as our representatives. But my out. job as a selectman is to understand it from um, beginning to end mm -hmm. all the way through. Yep. So if there's a gray area there, I want to look at it. All right. So. And once I see it once, I may never want to look at it again. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right, well, this looks good, Lee, and I like the way you've you lined this all up straight. It's very easy to read. We don't need to go over revenues because we've already done that. Okay, do you want to talk about any use of surplus at this time? You want to wait until that workshop? Um, I thought that workshop would be the best time to do it because then we'll have an accurate number and we can look at where to put some there and then some towards there. So knowing that we're going to use $100,000, the surplus is $959,732. Minus $100,000. And it is nine what? $959,732. And that eighteen one is still up in the air. So that would be an additional $18,000. That would reduce the nine fifty nine. dollars Can crush it. Pardon? Can crush it. Because that's the way he presented it. Did you say can and crush? Can. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll hold on to this. Yeah, I'm ready to vote no one that can't crush already. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, that sounds good. Yeah, I'd like to wait till that meeting so then we can look at it and make a... Um, so you wanted to squash that. Yeah. <laughs> Do it while I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Lena. I know that was a lot of work, but... Uh, All right, I, I think she did a great job. I appreciate job. that. I mean, does it get any easier? No, not when I have new boards coming through all the time wanting to know everything all over again. 
final board review is done on the uh, proposed budgets. Review warrant for changes um, to revised budget we already did. And we'll vote on it during the public hearing, correct? Um, yes, um, as written, yes. You talk on it and then vote. Yeah, we'll get it all talked out and then we'll uh, yeah. vote on it that Because uh, someone in the audience may convince the board to say, hey, we don't want it this way, and you can just amend it then. And uh, we're going to have it in a different location? Yes, at the um, community center? Yes, thank you. Because of the bond and... Um, we may have a little more participation. This yeah. is, yeah. And then I will have Zoom set up there. Donna's going to work for us to take to handle that because I should be. I had, for one, I have not. No, she. I think she did it last year. Worked very well. And she said that she would be willing to do that for us. Okay. Um, the next thing on our agenda is the time clock policy. Lean and I went through this before we went down to see the transfer station um, manager to go over it, and we put. Um, a point bulletin in this um, time clock policy. Um, opening and closing of the entrance gate will be tracked on a separate time card that will be handwritten and submitted with the regular punch time card. Um, so we added that billet point to there just so they know and we explained how to do it and we want all of the cards to be punched and we want all the employees to sign this new um, regulation that affects, which would be the assistant manager and the manager. And we spoke about signing it back to lean, and uh, it seemed to be all understood, and we went through it, and we went through examples of it, and we went through examples of when they handwrite on their time card because somebody forgets to punch in, that the employee needs to sign there, or initial, and so does the manager. And that way when we get an audit, we're not having a time card without yep. the employee initialing it, so it doesn't look like our change. Correct. So we went through that, and you know, we said that we were, we got this information back from the auditor on how to do some of this stuff. Uh, can you make a motion? <coughs> so I make a motion to amend the uh, policy for departments with time clocks. Um, with that one statement I made, opening and closing of the entrance gate will be tracked on a separate time card that will be handwritten and submitted with a regular punch time card. Um, all in favor? Oh, you need a second. I'll second it. Oh. <laughs> there you second. Go. All in favor? Aye. No discussion. Aye. You can. You already discussed it, Bob. Yeah. Okay. Aye. You're the one that made it. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're trying to make sure that we um, do everything by the book as far as using that time clock machine. Uh, it was always handwritten in the past. Here you go, Bob. I hand yep. that to lean after. And put it with the minutes. And put the public. You may want to say for the public. Yeah, with the minutes. With public. Yeah. yeah, so we're, we're doing that because the guys were opening and closing the gate as part of their duties, not just a worker going past the gate. So when it was part of their duties, it was understood that we should pay them for that time. Since the time clock's in the building and they're leaving and coming, um, they suggested after Bob talked with some people at what the state level, Bob? Yeah, the, US, uh, the uh, State Department of Labor. Um, to do it on a separate timesheet. And that way we could keep the punch in and punch out on the regular timesheet clear. Uh, we weren't able to track the last bunch of time cards and it was problematic. Um, that being said, on there, That's it on the regular items, and I'm going to go to the mailbox. I was going to review some more things, but I see they're in the mailbox. So. <coughs> um, Lane has written a letter, which was already in our minutes of our meeting, in reference to the ARPA grant that I asked her to write. That's pretty much verbatim to what I had. I typed word for word. Perfect. Um, we'll probably be reading this at the town meeting as well. Um, for those of you that aren't here, we're getting 301000 as an ARPA grant. We received 150 last year. And in June of this year, we're going to receive another 150. There are certain things you can use it for. And we've uh, 
identified two things to use it towards, and we're going to spend that money down before we lose it. We had a department meeting with the transfer station supervisor. Um, Lean had bullet points here for the other selectmen to read. Um, in that, it reviewed a bunch of items that we had that were ongoing issues. Um, one of them being that time cards there and the punch in and punch out. Um, the card corrections we already spoke about and the manual entries and communication with the supervisor with the department head being lean and the backup being Mike Kaminsky, the chain of command to follow. Um, so it was all, it was a very positive meeting. It all went very well. Um, it seemed to go good and there seemed to be good understanding communication between the department head um, and the town administrator and myself. And uh, I think we came to some clear understandings, and hopefully it, it follows through. I, I see no reason why it shouldn't. Is that the this personnel file? I think it will be, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have here, uh, we did ask him to get a hold of Lean each and every Thursday uh, to bring to the Board of Selectmen Thursday mm -hmm. evening. Um, any requirements that he has in overtime and it was discussed to you know go home early come in late and do whatever he could to balance out his hours to the 40 hours uh, he was in agreement with that and was trying to do that it looked like that email is uh, very confusing Dave if you can clarify it this one here all right hello line it looks like Lane it looks like this week the snowstorm Doing my report and using my vacation time on Saturday that I will be around six or eight hours over the 40. Next week, um, he's trying to give us a little outlook of next week, but we told him every Thursday is the hard number you come back to the board with. So if he gives us an outlook, um, that's only an outlook. It's not an approval to work the overtime. Thursday is the date. Next week, it looks like I have a chance of snow on two events. I also have to stay late on Thursday as Cameron will be taking a class online. I will try to flex some hours around next week. So in other words, he's trying to flex your hours around to stay under the overtime hours. So what is he, what is he saying there, Dave? He's, I, my understanding is he's taking Saturday off for eight-hour holiday. Does yep. this say he is working... 48 hours regular and then they will be paying him for eight hours on the holiday or I it still it's not clear to me and it, and, and um, I was looking at it with the holiday on there it'll be six to eight hours of overtime because he got the holiday pay holiday? and he worked during the holiday he has to work over 40 to get time and a half so yeah. he's gonna have see, I, I, I just it's not clear well, wait to see if this, it matches his time card. Yeah, um, but from what I read here, so he's going to have six or eight hours over the 40, which includes his holiday pay. His 40 hours includes his holiday pay. So would you say that he's going to have 38 hours? Because he should be at 32 plus eight hours holiday, which would be a 40-hour week. Yep, so is he having 32 plus six or eight? So it would be 38 at street time, and we're just going to pay him the eight hours of holiday? Straight time. I, and those are the, the they're simple. They should, re, I should be able, he should be, be able to say, as of today, I have 31 hours. That's all I need to know. And then eight hours for the holiday if he's taking eight hours off. So there. The way I read this, Lane, yep. is he's going to have 32 hours of regular time, mm -hmm. eight hours of holiday pay, yep. and six or eight hours of overtime. If you have holiday, uh, if, if you have vacation in a work week, it does yeah. not. It's so not you guys count. just clarified that. Right. It's, so he would have to work 40 hours over 40 hours. So to he's going to end up with 48 hours at regular time. Straight time. That's what I think. Or 46 hours of regular 46 time. 46 of 40 yeah. straight time, and then we're paid at 8 hours of holiday. Just so the public knows, we just clarified that if you 
working overtime on a holiday or vacation or vacation yeah. um, you get paid at regular time you have to work over the 40 hours not including the holiday to get overtime and that was just cl clarified by the Department of Labor yeah so that's how I read it Lane so yeah. see if his time card matches that yeah um, I'll write right on here what I think it reads and you guys go from there but it would be nice if we just wrote 32 hours regular, eight hours. Right, because it's holiday. vacation time and it's holiday time. It's, it's, in the public sector, yeah. doesn't count. Yeah. Right, and then six to eight additional hours, I'll call it. Correct. And straight time. Straight time. Technically, they should make it all the same because in the private sector, it's different. You see where I'm going is you have two sets of rules, one for public sector, yeah. and, and, and actually they do that because they're trying to protect the taxpayer, yeah. but the person that really gets burnt is the person that's working and say he's got a holiday that week, you know, it doesn't, uh, it, it just oh, doesn't. Oh, you know what? He worked on the holiday. He gets time in half. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he did on. say that. So, so if he worked on the holiday, he would get time. So it is yeah. two and a half. Because he did say that, yeah, right. he worked For on the snow <coughs> removal, correct? Correct. How many hours of snow removal do we I have? I don't know what those hours are. On, on he, he said the six or eight hours. Was six or eight on, for snow is what I think he said. That's what I thought, too, when we were at the meeting. That's a lot of snow removal. So six was icy and to wet. eight hours. I think what I heard Bob say is in the future he should try to utilize his assistant to do those. Well, he had in the past. <laughs> well, can you repeat that to me? I was just writing it down, so. No, uh, in the past, yep. he had used the, well, currently the assistant supervisor. He used to do the plowing in the past. Yeah, he wouldn't go in basically, if it, especially if it was a holiday, he took the holiday off. Okay. Or as a floater because he doesn't work on Mondays. Well, the other thing too is Eddie, in the past, Eddie wasn't working as many hours in a week because you had a full staff there. Right. So he could come in and clean snow. There was no impact on overtime. Uh, unless in this case it was a holiday, so the part timer will get paid the holiday time now. Right. Okay, <clears throat> so we'll check this time card to see, but I think you are right. You did say you worked on holiday. Yeah. Um, we had another request come in, um, late, late person that would like to know if the town hall project does go out to bid again, he would like to have a chance to bid on it. Triple Construction LLC in Hudson. And uh, he did notice in the construction journal that it had closed out. Yeah. We need to check. Oh, is check uh, when you're looking at some of those. You need to check them out so we don't end up with a contractor. And I'm just going to put it this way: so we don't end up like with a contractor like we had for upstairs reinforcing the roof trusses mm -hmm. and uh, get the job half done yeah. and left mm -hmm. and had all his money. Mm -hmm. You know they. They were paid off in um, full, and uh, you don't want to have the same one. I had a call this week, and Lean, it may need some adjustment on our town website. They said it says that, um, says walkthroughs will be given still. Oh, that's what. Was that's why we're getting. So just say we'll change it to say it's been closed. Did yeah, so? mandatory walkthrough is closed. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, we're taking it off at this point because it's been on long. Take it off. So, yeah. yeah, I'll delete um, it. Yeah, yeah, the municipal association. We could contact back this guy if the bidding yeah. Yeah, yeah. fails. Yeah. And if it fails, it'll be on a, neck on a following year. It wouldn't be. Well, we could come up with something creative. Well, I'd say we cross that path when we get open the bid. If you're using surplus, you can't. Yeah. Yeah. It has to go through town meeting. Yeah. So it'd be a prior year. So, um, yeah, I, I did get that call this week that, that it, it was stayed on. There was a guy from the uh, construction summary asking if we were opening it back up. And I said, why do you, why do you call me again and ask me this week? I said, because we talked about it last week. He says, 
Well, I'm reading your town hall. <laughs> you, you report on your town website. It says, says you're still getting walked. And I said, oh, no, we clarified that last week. See the numbers out there, please. I'll take it off. Uh, we have a welfare department update from uh, Jeannie, um, the board of selectmen. This quarter we served 12 Dunbarton families through the Holiday Food Basket Program. We also assisted three families to obtain toys and clothing through the Salvation Army Christmas Program. We had an application for general assistance. Case management services were provided to the applicant. Respectfully submitted, Jeannie. It's nice to finally have these updates because we've never thing. had them before in the past from our pre <laughs> person. Um, I went over the ARPA notes earlier on. I received a request from Don Larson to use the inside front and back cover of the 2022 town report to place his reports for race across Dunbarton and flags of Dunbarton. Cost paid for by the cemetery committee. Oh, did I say cemetery? You did, you just said by the committee. No, it's the race across Dunbarton. Oh, by the race across Dunbarton? Yeah. yeah. What usually is on the inside front cover? Just I'm just curious. Just a little wording saying dedication of who picture was provided. Hey, Can it's you show me. us? It's me this year. I took that picture. Yeah. Oh my God. Get well, I'm just board. curious because you know if there's something important there. <laughs> <laughs> last, last year was the uh, conservation gentleman. Yeah, no, no. What, what he's asking about is on the inside. On the inside, yeah. Cover. We recognize the people who provided the photos this year. It's that cool. cover. So you just put that. He wants to put something here and pay for it, and he did this last year. Paid for this. I don't mind the back cover, but I think that front cover. Yeah, yeah, I do too. You see, you're you're starting with the town report right away. You got to an advertisement, and it's probably be good in the back. Yeah, which is in the front. I would rather see your name there that you took the photo. Or whoever did, you know, get some credit because it's the town report. It's an inside job. Consensus by the board is right. for the back cover. Back cover only. Good with that. How did you get your double, name in double there? Double right? <laughs> well, we're going to have to increase our, our quantity because the new, new uh, residents. Now, will he require two pages in the back? Or just well, he can split Split, split it. Or if he wants to pay for a color, a paper copy right. in the back. But all the committees have been moved to the back. Understood. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Mailbox items are complete. Public comment? No, it's enough. No comment. Linda. Um, we've got two races so far, as you see you? on the board. Two, what? Who are you? You said Linda. Yeah, but I didn't think I had to know. repeat my name. <laughs> Linda Landry, town clerk. There you go. All right. Filing period started yesterday for the upcoming uh, elected town and school offices. Um, we have two races so far. That's a uh, board of selectmen and school board. Uh, all the others have been incumbents who have refiled. Uh, we only lack two positions now, the two library positions, and I believe Mary said that the uh, she's got people coming over to sign up. Uh, John Trottier came in this evening, and he did sign up for a moderator. Oh, great. So that's a change since you saw the board a few hours ago. Awesome. Thank you, Linda, for the update. You're welcome. And thanks for putting them up there. It's nice to be able to see them. Welcome. Irene taught me well. All right, uh, bring it back to the town administrator. I have nothing else to add. Bob, can go to you first? Uh, well, the only thing I have is that you know how bad the weather was Saturday. Mm -hmm. It was very cold, very windy. Uh, I did make a trip to the transfer station. Yep. I got a chance to talk to Woody, and I was hoping that they would give the guys a few extra break times to go in and warm up. Number one is the heater wasn't working Saturday, but even when it's working, they got to be standing right next to it because it's cold. Uh, and one of the guys ended up going home at the end of the day with his feet very cold, and he said he took a shower and they were still cold. It was the only thing that didn't warm up. So, you know, I like to give uh, 
Woody some direction to give the guys when it's real inclement weather mm -hmm. a chance to warm up because there's just a few guys working together. And um, uh, Lean and I did reiterate that during our meeting and told them that we like those people who come inside. They can look out the window if there's customers out there getting backed up, but on those real cold days, we did reiterate that they're able to come in that office, warm up, stay there, even if stuff does pile up because they have warmer days that they can do it on. Okay, I'm glad you did that yeah. only because uh, it didn't occur. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, at least now, maybe in the future, it will. You know yeah. I mean? Lean was right there, and we asked him to make sure they could come inside. Um, he did tell us the heaters were working. Well, that was, that was they got it running later oh, in they the morning. Did? Okay. Yeah, but like uh, one of the people said, you got to be standing right next to it. And okay. of course, they're moving around all the time, so right. there's no standing right there. Okay, yeah, so we did cover that part. Anything else, Paul? No, that should do it. I'm good for the night. Okay, um, I just got a couple of things. Um, Linda's here now, so I guess I'll go over that. I went over to see Eric Hodgman because I got a call from him today. Our boxes are completely built. Um, he's working on the finishing touches. Uh, we went over hardware changes. I've exhausted myself. Linda has. Um, Joe Marie has. And Eric has trying to find the exact hardware on the old box. It doesn't appear we can find it. Um, he does have trunk hardware that is fairly close, so I told him that would be fine since we can't find the originals. And he does have the corners that are fairly close. Okay. He's already bought the hinges, and the latch is just a simple latch. Um, one thing after coming in to meet with Linda this week, if you look at our box, you don't really notice, but on the back side, there was a viewer slot. So you could actually see the papers in there and how much they're building up. It's just a view slot. Yeah. And it has glass insert in it. I asked him if it was plexiglass. He said they're real glass. Linda um, let him borrow um, her poster that shows all the different towns with these hand-built um, boxes. All of them have the viewer slots in them. Mm -hmm. Ours, for some reason, I think the cover was taken off when they replaced it. Turned it 180 degrees. Maybe the hinge locations were worn out. All the other ones have the view panel in the front. Ours is in the back. Hmm. <coughs> it was on the side. Now I'll have to look at it. He calls the, f the side with a Dunbar. Okay. It looks like it's on the side because okay. the, um, the front is the narrower side and the deeper sides are where the handles are. So you would think the front would be the flatter side, but it's not. It's where the Dunbar uh -huh. is. So we'll get rid of the aluminum ones? Um, we're not going to get rid of them, yeah. but um, for this election, he's hoping he'll have them done. They still can be sanded, stained, hardware applied. Um, he is going to put that view panel in there, yeah. um, just like the original ones have it on there. And um, he's working on a Dunbarton emblem that would be stenciled on there, giving us the horse and the rider that's normally... <laughs> Um, on our I signage. have a few of those. If, um, be perfect. He's going to come in and see Linda the next day or two. Maybe you could flag him down. Yeah. <coughs> so I just want to give you an update on how those are coming and the hardware that's coming. Dave? Oh, thank you. On the hardware, has he tried Van Dyke's? Uh, let me write it down and I'll ask him. Van Dyke? Yeah, Van Dyke. I think it's Van Dyke Restoration. Scale used to use them a lot. We used to get stuff from them. They have, I mean, tons and tons of different stuff. Yeah. yeah. I had a couple old hardware companies that I used to use with uh, Jerry Kennedy, and I couldn't find any better stuff, but I'll yeah. come check that. Yeah, it, they, they, I'm telling you, they got... I know the company you're talking of, okay. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had a book from them about that. Right, day. exactly. Um, I'll give it to them. So we'll double check that one more time, but I just want to give you a heads up that those will be ready, so that'll be nice to, uh, <coughs> nice to see. For the general public, uh, these are box fit cornered old style voting boxes. Instead of using the cheap aluminum ones that we've had banging around here that don't hardly snap together, uh, we'll have actually authentic voting boxes again. Very nice. So, um, that being said, that's taken care of, and uh, he hopes to have those finished for our next voting. 
I went over to look, <coughs> excuse me, for the town hall steps, mm -hmm. and the top layer of concrete's all gone, the front steps are all gone, it's all been hand jackhammered away, and they've all been carried away with a wheelbarrow and put in the dumpster. Yeah, I see that, yeah. So they've taken the dumpsters and unloaded them. They're defrosting the front face now to go down 24 inches below the grade to pin the new frost wall in front of the other one. <coughs> I have pictures here that show um, there are actually just old boulders. There's no bricks. It's just boulders, round boulders underneath that whole thing. Oh yeah, that's how they used to do them. And there were some smaller ones mixed in there, and back where that had sunk down, there wasn't enough smaller ones. Um, they were going to level that all out with smaller ones and or chink it first with loose cement hmm. so that it solidifies it before they pour. Um, but the photographs are pretty interesting when you look at them. You should send them to me so I could just... Uh... I will. But uh, you can flip through. Mike, there are three of them here. No time capsules in there? They didn't mm. find any... No, I went and looked, and uh, it's very, it's very uniform. Most of the rocks are about this size. They're very round. Huh. They're not square and uh, ledgy looking yeah, rocks. That's interesting. But they determined that it'd be best to leave it in there and um, shim it up with yeah. some proper stonage, and then and then go right over it. Because if you tried to excavate that out by hand, you'd have to go down four more feet below the grade. So yeah, it, yeah. it's probably six feet down. It would be an incredible amount of work. I'm sure it's pretty packed down after all these years too. Yeah, that must be all gravel stone then. Big though. Yeah, but yeah, but big gravel stones. Then. Yeah. So, yeah, did you lose it? To see a I lie saw them. Though. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, we're using small, uh, the small hammer drills, and not the ninety pounder. No, <laughs> they use just a small one. Broke it up good, um, mm -hmm. and that's been heated in there. The nice thing about the heat Sorry. is where that was tipped back towards the building, some frost had built up in there. Oh. So before they pour, it's melting all the frost out. Yeah, good. And so that heat is running all night tonight to heat the front of that. There was no, um, the cement was older, I would imagine, the concrete. Yeah. No rebar in it, no, no wire mesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the new one's going to have rebar yeah. and wire mesh yeah, combined, yeah. Yeah. and it'll be an outdoor mixture so it doesn't pop. So. Yeah. As much as can be yeah. done, will be done. Mm. Yeah. So it looks like it's coming right along. That was a great, great project to do this yeah. year, this last year. And you know, it's an off season for them, so putting the plastic up and working is a great time for yeah. them to do it too. What was the price on that? I want to say, was it twenty eight thousand? Yeah, uh, that thirty. Yeah. That included the stairs, the face. It was like what about ten years ago? <coughs> the they asked me to give them an idea what it would cost. And I told them. The minimum of twenty thousand to start. Yeah. So I guess that wasn't too far off ten no. years ago. So they didn't use the, the concrete with fiber in it. Then. No, I don't believe they will either. Not when they do the um, when they do the wire mesh and the rebar. I don't think they will. Okay. No, I, it, it's just a little easier to use than, than the wire mesh because nobody really picks it up mm -hmm. when you're pouring. Yeah, Everybody's easy. such in such a rush to pour it. You know, usually you could come and watch up. these guys, they will. <laughs> they actually have the little tripod stablers to yeah, hold little, it up. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. <coughs> um, that's all I have. Oh. Um, I guess seeing nothing else. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn at 918. Oh. Second. Second.